What's going on everyone and today we're going to be doing a little makeover to all my CPU mining rigs. So as you can see I am using these white standoffs right now but I have a couple brackets here. By couple I don't know there's probably about 20 or so. So I'm going to be throwing all of these onto these on top of changing my power connectors over and you know just do a little makeshift makeover here and see exactly how it does turn out. So we are going to go from this to this. So what's going on everyone and welcome to the Rabbit Mining YouTube channel. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, thumbs up and bell notification to be notified for future videos. Well to start off here I do want to be throwing on these style brackets right here. So let's kind of look at what we got going on. So see now they're kind of sitting here. It's also going to flip everything 180 so that the cooler is going to be on the bottom. I originally did have found one out on Thingsverse but it did not really want to work. You would have had to have your motherboard the other way. It would have had the cooler on the top, making it more top heavy. So actually a community member, I believe it's Kia Enigma Adventures, did make these for me. So he put the RM in the bottom corners here. We'll take a look at later on. But instead of having three wide, like I do on this shelf, because that one rig three did go into my server. But instead of having them three across this way, I could potentially stack them up this way and then maybe kind of fit three in a line or kind of V it like this or something. Ultimately, you know, you could double or triple the amount of room that everything is needed. So I could throw pretty much six rigs for the same amount of space as three rigs. So we're gonna see if that happens and if this works according to plan. Well, enjoy the profitability guys. I'm about to hit the power button and bam, there we go. So this power supply is running these two rigs down here and these three rigs up here. Move on over to the next ones. I gotta start killing the power to these. Bam, 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 bam. So all my CPUs are now currently offline. So what do I actually have for CPUs? So this whole shelf here is all 3,900Xs. Those two down there are 3,900Xs. And these two up here are 3950X Ryzen CPUs. So I do have this nice uh, kit here that is loaded up full of screws, which has pretty much any screw you do need when it comes to any type of PC builds, mining builds, whatever. So you are gonna need your standoff screws. So I hopefully I do have enough in here to utilize all my rigs for those little brackets, but I guess we'll find out as we go along. So I have one mostly done. I still gotta change some wiring, but I kinda show you what I got going on here. So as you can see with this one, it's using an M2 drive, so the SSD holder is not needed. But here, these are the brackets right here. Then if you move it over, you can see that the SSD does screw right into the side. So it has a little mount there for your SSD and everything's going pretty much like this. So all the room this thing really takes is, you know, this line here. So essentially you can keep putting them back to back and save up a lot more area. So I also run these off 300 watt Pico adapters and that gives me the ability to utilize this 1200 watt server power supply for multiple CPU mineable rigs. Now I am using these barrel plugs right here. These are five millimeter, if I can get a focus, five millimeter to 2.5 millimeter. Now, a lot of people order 2.1 millimeter and this melts very fast. So I did have one rig that started to melt right at the end here over the course of a few months. But uh, again, I'm gonna be changing these out to these bad boys right here because I do plan on actually moving these up from 3.6 up to 3.8 gigahertz in terms of uh, overclock settings. So these are Anderson plugs. They are rated for 30 amp all the way up to 600 volts. We are gonna be using only 12 volt. Remember, it's a 12 volt rail that does power these. So these are good for about 320 to 340 watts or so. So we should easily be able to power our rigs safely coming in with those 300 watt picos. If you're unfamiliar with Anderson plugs, you are gonna need this special crimper here. I will have a link in the description, but right now it's in lock, so I'm just gonna unlock it. And depending on the gauge of your wire and the plugs you're using, you are gonna have to use a certain spot on this crimper and simply you just put it in there. Once you got your wires ready, push it down once 
and it's set. So it's pretty easy to use, fairly basic, but I'll show you when I do get to it. So here is my barrel plug to the Pico I was using. I just took the, obviously the wires out of PSU end here. You can see this one's actually kind of stuck. So this one was starting to get close to, I guess, failing per se. So all I'm gonna do here though is actually cut it off this male end right here, or of this barrel plug. So probably around this area. So we'll just give it a chop in here. There we go. Nice. So now I'm just gonna strip back these wires and actually get ready to put these into the Anderson plug themselves. So we're gonna go through the crimping process right quick here. And this is 14 gauge wire. This is from Parallel Miner. So it's good for, you know, a decent amount of power draw. We're just gonna put our little end onto here. This is the Anderson plug Ordilio. We're gonna need our actual crimper. So you can see right on here, we have 15, 30, and 45 amps. So these are for 30 amp, these ends. So we're just gonna open it up and you can see there's a little slot in there. So we're just gonna have to get this inside there. It's gonna hold like so. And now we just simply push it down. Bam, we're done. There it is, look at that, nice perfect crimp. This thing is set perfect for it, everything's good. Obviously you can do your own little pull test, or pull test, I'll just get this out of the way so we can do that. Hopefully it doesn't come apart, but yeah, you can see that's nice and tight. So that's step one. So I went ahead and crimped our negative as well, and the next step is actually putting on our connector ends themselves. So this is the end right here that actually goes in to the other one. And this is the one you gotta insert into the housing. So simply, you look to where the rail is, you put this end down into it, like so. And then you just push it in until you hear a nice click. So we're just gonna kinda wiggle it around till we find it. There we go. And there, it clicked in. We're good. So this is now locked into place, the tip's there. And we're all good, this one's already. So I do have both of them on. We got our positive and our negative. Make sure you, when you do the other end, have your positive and negative together to match so you know you put your red into red and your black into black. Don't just start throwing things together or things may get mixed up and you could run into some issues, potential fires. Okay, so this is what I do have so far and this whole bottom shelf now no longer has any more rigs. Looks like I could fit six up here. I'm not sure if I'm gonna put that one right here yet or not, but for the most part, I think I'm just gonna go up to here for now and then I'll figure out what to do with those 3950Xs and those two rigs right there some other time. But I did run into one issue. I went to boot all these up and you can see I'm missing a rig in the back here and it happened to be kind of a pain to get at. But rig four, which was that one, so we have rig one, two, three. Actually rig three is my server one, so I gotta skip that number and renumber stuff. But so we got one, two, four there's rig five he's hiding in the back you know keeping his cool and stuff and then we got rig six here so rig four which was there i accidentally hit the clear cmos button uh, at least that's what i'm hoping happened <laughs> so i got to take this over go to the test bench reset the bios and everything up which i'll show you how to do for mine i'm going to set it to 3.8 at one volt and hopefully that fixes the issue so that one is missing now and then i'll get that back in there once i tweak it Okay, so we booted it up here and this is what we got. So pretty much like a fresh install. But it does say devices change, CPU or memory or CMOS has been cleared. So we know what's going on here. This CMOS was cleared in this case. I knew in one of these rigs I did hit a button. Wasn't sure which one. And I was just hoping I didn't hit it long enough. But this is the one. And yes, this CMOS is cleared. So let's tweak this BIOS to the settings I actually want to use. So here we are in the BIOS, guys. So if uh, you know this is something you've never seen before, this is it. <laughs> I'm sure most of you have seen this. If you're running your rigs in HiveOS or something, when it comes to CPU mining, this is where you set all your overclock type of settings. Now, this is stating I'm at 3.8. Uh, that's essentially where I left it. So I don't know what's going on here. These are seeing the same. Maybe it just got rid of my actual boot setting. So I'm just gonna try to find that here. So we're gonna go to advanced here in system, look for power management setup. And it looks like restart out their AC power loss is power off. So yeah, we definitely need this on. So that was not saved. So let's just see what else we got here. Uh, let's go back, back, OC settings. So we're in our overclock settings here. We're on all core. This is set at auto CPU configurations. Okay, so maybe it's not set. 
So let's just apply an alt core to this operation. Do we want to go insert per? Uh, we don't have to. We're just doing alt core so we can just do our ratio. So I guess it's just default. What the? Okay, so we're at 3.8 now. Uh, everything's 3,800, so 3.8 gigahertz. I do want one volt on the voltage, though. We do not want to run default. If you run default, then you're pretty much running, like, say, a PBO, whatever the default PBO type of settings are, and that is not recommended. So we got to find the CPU core voltage. That is right here. It's currently in auto, and we want to override that and drop this down to one volt. Bam, there we go. So I probably get away with something a little bit lower, but I am going to use one. We're going to be using 3.8. Now DRAM, I do leave the XMP profiles off. If you do want to crank this up, obviously you can set it individually like so up to 3200. That's what this one is. But I'm just leaving that 2400. I do find you get a higher hash to watt ratio, which means you are using less power and maximizing your hash rate. Now you will get more hash rate um overclocking your ram a bit more but it does take more power than what it's actually worth again hash to watt ratio here so 3.8 one volt restore after ac power loss this is all i need to do in here i'm gonna hit f10 and save this okay so now that it's off i'm gonna hit this power button and hopefully everything should turn on don't worry i'm 100 confident it will because that's just how you do this stuff bam and look at that it is on 100 so we can Pull the power button off and set this back up and get her going. Okay guys, so there we have it. I got most of it complete. These, I'm still gonna decide what I wanna do here, but let's just go over what exactly went on. So I have five sitting here. I could probably get away with six over here, but for now I'm just gonna go with five. As you can see, everything is running and all these rigs are running off this single server power supply. So look at all the room this actually saved here. So in, in theory, you know, before I had three, you know, six, you could fit 12 between the two. Doing everything like this, I could fit 24 rigs between these two shelves. Actually, if I use, start using the tops of these as well, I could fit a lot more, but I essentially could double up the amount of rigs I have in the same amount of space, going from three to six. This PDU may make things a little bit tricky here, but we'll see what happens in the future. But for the most part, uh, we got this done. Everything's running there. I do plan on running everything off a server power supply because it will free up so many more plugs. Look at that. Look at all that. Four rigs is using up all those power supplies where these five is only utilizing that single 1200 watt. Now I could throw a 1500 watt in there. I do have one and potentially run everything off of that one power supply. I have enough 300 watt picos to do it. Uh, you know, I have enough cables and everything for it, so maybe I will do that. We'll see what happens in the future, what I run into. Now remember, depending what you're mining and, you know, how you're running your CPUs, for the most part, the way I run mine, I believe on like XMR, these are only using about 109 watts. Raptorium, the majority around the 87 watt range. And on something like, say, I don't even know, something that peaks out, Raptorium does peak upwards of around 120 watts of rig, so you do gotta account for those little spikes on certain algorithms. But for the most part, you know, we're only running around 85 upwards to about 120 watts all the time on each rig. And majority of the time, it's always under 100 watts. So CPU mining is really efficient. And there's a bunch of coins out there that makes these things, you know, very profitable. So let's get a little closer look on how these are actually looking. So as you can see, I did utilize the SSD holder on the ones that are actually utilizing the SSD. Looking in between, it does look fairly close. I was testing the heat and these are running with the stock Wraith Prism coolers at about 58 degrees or so. So that's actually not too bad. These are still running fairly decent. Over time, I'll test to see if they remain, but look at that, the space saving is awesome. Way better than the previous standoffs I was using. I really love these brackets. They are nice and stable. Look, we'll do a little top heavy test. So if I go up, let let go, rolls back. Bring it up, let go. Oh, it's kind of hovering there. There we go. Got to be careful. That might have been right at the balancing point. But for the most part, you know, obviously, unless you bang it, it's going to go top heavy with these Noctua coolers. But for the most part, you can see, come up a bit, let it go. It just jumps back. So these are you know the weight accounted to come in the back and that's one of the reasons why i did want the coolers on the bottom and not on the top because then obviously all that weight is up here and the slightest bump movement vibration could 
topple it over and you know that'd be bad anyway guys thank you for watching this video i'll see you on the next one rabbit out thank you for watching my video and if you haven't seen one of these be sure to check them out and if you already seen them maybe you missed some might have to watch it one more time and if you just let it play in the background that's all right as well. I do try to live stream every weekend as well as every couple days during the week. So be sure to be subscribed so you don't miss that. As always, have a great day.